Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. This is a quick video about lung function comparisons over time and trends that we might need to look into. It's just because I see this sometimes in clinic when patients do present with uh, chronic respiratory disease, whether it's COPD poly or asthma or pulmonary fibrosis or some other uh, respiratory condition that's been going on for a long time, one of these chronic ones that doesn't really go away. And we're trying to monitor lung function tests. And I can see this from the patient perspective once and also from the healthcare provider perspective. I think uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, make this video for both uh, people who might be watching, both types of people who might be watching. So if you're uh, if you're a patient, I think sometimes what I've noticed is that you put a lot of stock on each individual breathing test or lung function test. So when you go and you blow into the machine, you get some numbers out, you go to your doctor and you're like, what does this mean? Now, it's really important to note that we are always, always looking for the trend. I think what's happening to the numbers over time, because you may have a day when you do the breathing test when you're not feeling your best, or you may not be able to synchronize yourself with uh, the instructions from the operator, the physiologist, the doctor who's asking you to blow into that machine. And you may not get the maximum numbers possible or for, for whatever reason on that day. So if we use that as a baseline, and then you're trying to compare that number with another number that you get on a different day, maybe on a different machine, it may not mean the same thing. So generally what I would recommend is, so if you're a patient or if you're a healthcare provider and if you're looking for trends in lung function tests, it's also important to not just look at the percentages. The percentages that you get on a lung function test, so for instance, if it says 89%, it does not necessarily mean that it's 89% of your capacity. It just means that it's, or you, that your lungs are working at 89%. It just means that that measured value is 89% of a theoretical predicted value for a population of your same of the same age, sex, and height as you are. So this is basically a comparison to the average. So some people will have, even if they're perfectly normal, super normal lung function, so their percentages may be higher or lower, but if they hover around the 100% mark, that's probably a good benchmark that that value is more or less what we expect it to be. But we need to also compare the number that was measured, so because that's the actual number that is measured. So if, you're, if your lung function test, for instance, says that you've got a forced um, vital capacity uh, of or an FVC value of three liters, let's say 3.0 liters, that's actually the measured value. That's how much air you've been, you've moved from your lungs. So we're comparing that value to another value on a different day. So that is the absolute value. The number in liters is the absolute value, the number measured. And that's the one that we should be comparing when we're looking at trends, because the percentage gives you an indication, how do you compare to the average of the population, but then the actual value measured is the one that's necessary to look and plot that trend over time. And then if you do have lung function done in different places, I would recommend that you keep hold of these reports as much as possible, or you write down the values, because it does really help other healthcare providers to see what the trend is and what has happened. So always, always try to think about these two things. What is the trend in the absolute value of the actual liters measured? And whether if you have some kind of values that fall outside the range of the trend, you have some outlier values, whether those were measured on a day when you were feeling unwell or too well, or something happened because it's important what was going on. So for instance, I'll give you an example and I'll finish with this. But if you have a breathing test done, maybe one week after you've just finished with a chest infection with a, an episode of pneumonia or, you know, of bronchitis, it's likely that the values will be lower because you haven't yet recovered to baseline. So if you measure the lung function test, then you do the breathing test, then probably the values won't be what you expect. It won't be your true baseline. So we need to give some time for recovery, which is usually probably about six weeks. So I would say that we need to always interpret lung function values in the wider context. What has happened around the time when these values were measured and plot the values over time, preferably looking at a table or a graph, looking at the absolute values or the actual liters of uh, volume measured. And the same goes for all the other parameters on the lung function test to look at the absolute values also in comparison to the percentages. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this was a helpful tip and I'll come back with further videos in the future. All the best and good health.